anatomists need to be precise in their language. And one set of terms uses the midline of the body as a reference point. Uh, moving towards the midline or closer to the midline is known as medial, while farther from the midline or moving away from the midline would be lateral. This is relative. So for example, in these images, uh, the lungs are lateral to the heart or to the trachea, which lie along the midline, so they would be medial. Um, and so in these images, the heart and the trachea are medial, the lungs are lateral. But if the comparison was being made between, say, the lungs and the rib cage, the lungs would be closer to the midline uh, than uh, the rib cage would be. The terms medial and lateral could be used to compare positions of two structures. So for example, on a vertebra, the spinous process is located along the midline. It is medial, while the transverse processes are lateral. In the brain, the two lobes of the thalamus are close to the midline. They are medial, while portions of the cerebral cortex, like the olfactory cortex, would be lateral to that. In the spinal cord, the central canal and gray commissure are along the midline and medial, while the posterior lateral and ventral horns uh, would be lateral uh, to those regions. If one were looking at an image of an anatomical structure, very often the label of the image would have whether this is a medial or a lateral view. So for example, with the brain, the medial view would have a section of the corpus callosum. In the hip, the lateral view would show the socket, uh, known as the acetabulum, uh, for the round head of the femur, while the medial view would not. It instead would have the auricular surface where the sacrum attaches. A medial view of uh, skull bones could then show a section of the cranial uh, cavity, while a lateral view of the rib cage uh, would uh, be seen here. The terms medial and lateral are often used in the names of anatomical structures, such as the medial and lateral condyles and epicondyles of the femur, the medial malleolus of the tibia, the medial and lateral condyles of the tibia, the medial and lateral epicondyles of uh, the humerus, the medial border of the scapula, etc. Also, uh, when one tries to distinguish between left and right versions of bones, one needs to know which uh, side faces medially and which side faces laterally in order to make that distinction. When learning the muscles, one must learn the muscles which will allow for a medial rotation of the arm or leg versus lateral rotation. And so these directional terms, medial and lateral, are important for anatomy students.